probably touch uh, upon the importance of the competency and training of Jane uh, in the financial industry. Uh, and I want to start by introducing myself. My name is Yusuf al and I'm the Chief Strategic Development Officer in the Qatar Financial Center Authority. And I am also the uh, Secretary to the Financial Market Development Committee. Uh, the, this, this idea actually uh, was born uh, within the Financial Market Development Committee, uh, which is chaired by His Excellency, the Minister of Finance uh, and Economy. Uh, and this specific initiative, among other initiatives, uh, actually this initiative was, was led by uh, Dr. Abdul Aziz al Khal, who's put in uh, a lot of effort uh, to make uh, this a reality. Uh, just to touch upon the objectives of the FNBC, Maybe a lot of you uh, care about the FNBC, uh, uh, but nobody uh, knows actually what the objectives of the FNBC is. So the FNBC was set up to actually set policies and strategies uh, governing the state, uh, the state's capital market, develop and design plans and programs to develop the financial market and uh, to also coordinate between different government authorities uh, that are involved in the development of the financial industry uh, and supervise the implementation of financial market uh, policies, strategies, and plans, uh, review feasibility studies for projects, and study financial benefits uh, for proposed projects, and communicate to the relevant bodies on the recommendations, <coughs> results, and proposed solutions for the development of the financial market. So this is uh, actually a forum uh, that includes very high profile individuals uh, in the financial sector in the state of Papua. Uh, and, and, and this is where this initiative uh, of Tadrib was actually launched, discussed, uh, uh, approved, uh, and, the, uh, and agreed upon. Uh, to talk a little bit about the training regime, uh, uh, allow me to elaborate uh, on, on, on a couple of points. First, why the quality of human capital? Uh, is of particular importance to the financial services industry. Second, why in today's environment it matters more than ever uh, before. Uh, and finally, third, why tra training and competency standards and regimes are a key success factor for Kappa as an emerging uh, financial center. Financial firms such as wealth managers and insurance uh, provide intangible services whose benefits, as a rule, can only be assessed by customers after concluding respective contracts and entrusting funds or making premium payments uh, to these providers. This is why the quality of companies, financials, and human capital is the most important consideration for existing and prospective customers when selecting a bank or an insurer, or an insurer for, uh, for, as an example. Whereas a company's financial strength can be assessed on the basis of ratings and analyst reports, <coughs> customers usually form an opinion on the quality of the company's staff based on direct interaction uh, and experience. Therefore, the way of, of a company's employee sell its product, offer after sales services, and manage financial, operational, and compliance risk is arguably the biggest single determinant of the firm's franchise and its ability to command a premium on market prices based on superior customers' trust and market reputation. Now against this backdrop, the hard and soft qualifications of their staff is naturally on the top of the agenda of any management team and board of directors seeking to maximize a company's sales and revenues while carefully managing and mitigating the association risks of uh, doing business. Now the experience and aftermath of the global financial crisis of 2007 and 2008 uh, has further added to the importance of employee training and the development of appropriate competencies as an important factor which helps keep employees and organizational goals uh, aligned. Customer and regulatory scrutiny have reached unprecedented levels following a series of high-profile public bailouts and mis-selling scandals. Just think of the UK banking sector, for example. 
In the post-crisis environment, the corporate margin of error has <laughs> in the post-crisis environment, the corporate margin of errors has, has clearly reduced. Regulatory requirements have multiplied. At the same time, the area of products and services keeps expanding, with customers becoming even more uh, assertive. Financial services providers have to ensure that they, employees from tellers and small regional banks, to senior executives at large investment firms to remain in compliance with relevant, relevant regulations and to put customers' interests first. Therefore, despite tight budgets, far-sighted financial services firms around the globe have stepped up the training programs delivered to their employees, ranging from sales training, anti-money laundering, budget management, to cash flow management. Now, having said this, Investing in training and staff competencies is more than a response to current challenges. It has always been and will continue to be an important driver of financial performance. Empirical studies from a number of countries suggest that companies that encourage consistent employee learning and development perform better in a range of categories than those that do not. For example, some of the business advantages that result from ongoing skill development include higher employee productivity and customer satisfaction and market leadership for at least one product or service. Ladies and gentlemen, training and competency regimes are of particular importance to a rapidly growing financial services marketplace such as Papa. Building customer awareness and confidence is a prerequisite to capturing the market's potential. Company may find their, companies may find their growth, uh, growth momentum short-lived if appropriate staff qualifications responding to and complementing regulatory requirements are not put in place. Emerging markets are even more vulnerable than mature ones to the actions of a handful of poorly regulated and run providers that can undermine consumer trust, leading to adverse reputation effects for all providers that may take years to overcome. As you know, the development of a vibrant financial services sector in COPAP is a key pillar of the government's long-term economic diversification strategy. Financial services currently accounts for 11% of COPAP's GDP, and we all would like to see this ratio increase further. Whether our efforts are successful or not will very much depend on the skills and competencies profile of the sector employees. Let's summarize. The financial industry and the business of trust, the behavior of employees determines whether trust is built, maintained, or destroyed. This makes training and competency development so vital for the industry. In particular, in the post-crisis environment of heightened customer and regulatory scrutiny. For Papa, as an emerging financial services market, the qualifications of employees matters greatly. Not just in terms of promoting customer awareness and trust, also as a vehicle for strengthening the sustainability of the market's growth trajectory. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.